Okay, today I wanted to talk about my spectrum analyzer tester. Um, I think I've shown this before a long time ago, but um, I, was, I was using it uh, for a particular reason and I thought, oh, I, I don't think I've done a really good video on that before. And so um, when I was searching for spectrum analyzers many years ago, um, I wanted to be able to test them when I went out to purchase something. So if you go to somebody's garage or, you know, somewhere, you want to test it out and you want to be able to know whether it has the correct options or not. Sometimes people go inside equipment and they pull out some stuff and it, it ruins particular things that maybe the sticker on the back says it has, but when you open it up, actually, maybe it's missing. I've, I've had that happen to me before. So I wanted to be able to test the spectrum analyzer. And one of the things I really want to test is its resolution bandwidth. And um, so you need to have something that you can have two frequencies right next to one another and try to resolve the two of them. And so I built this thing. Um, it has two oscillators in it. It has a one oscillator that measured 16.6664 and one oscillator that measured 16.6673. So they're about one kilohertz apart. I think it's 890 hertz apart. So about one kilohertz apart. So if your spectrum analyzer can resolve one kilohertz, you need at least 500 hertz of resolution bandwidth, right? Or better have maybe one 300 megahertz, uh, 300 hertz of resolution bandwidth in order to um, resolve that. And I'll show that to you here. Um, so this this was a handy handy dandy and it was battery powered, put it in my pocket. Um, so let's take a look at the schematic. So it has a nine volt battery, a switch. It's a momentary switch. Uh, it has a 78 LO5, so it regulates the voltage down to five volts. And then it powers up the two oscillators, this oscillator, this oscillator. The two oscillators are combined with 10K resistors. It's then AC coupled to the output, so there'll be no DC bias on it. And uh, hook it up to a spectrum analyzer. So yeah, there you go. Very, very simple. I encourage you to build one. What you need to do is you need to go buy a bunch of uh, oscillator cans. These are the 14 pin oscillator cans, standard things. It doesn't matter what size you get. They can be the little the little shorter ones or the full size ones, it doesn't matter. Just get a bunch of them and then figure out which, which is your biggest one and which one is your smallest one. And I found uh, that I could get about a kilohertz difference between these two. And so I put them in here. Now these would still make the spec of the parts, not like one part is bad, one part is good. There's just tolerance in the crystal. And so I just picked two that were about a kilohertz apart, which is what I wanted. And then when you push the button, oh, I put an LED on mine too, so you know it's on. Um, and then it comes out on a BNC. So yeah, there you go. So um, nice little handy unit. Uh, let's hook it up and see how it does. Now I'm going to be looking at two different spectrum analyzers. I'm going to be looking at my, uh, my signalant, and then we'll go over here and we'll look at a, a tiny SA Ultra. And so I'm going to split the uh, split the signal. I've got a, a coupler, or not a coupler, a splitter here, a power splitter. It's good from 10 megahertz up, so it will be able to handle this. So we'll attach it here. All right. And now when I push the button, it'll it'll uh, show on both spectrum analyzers. Uh, let's see. Here. Let me turn this over here a little bit. Uh, okay. So when I push the button, boom, you see you see a signal, and you say, oh well. That's not a very good signal. I'm not re resolving anything, okay? Well, right now, our resolution bandwidth is 3 kilohertz, so that's not going to be able to see anything. So I have the center at 16.666, and then uh, if I hit the span button, I can zoom in on it, and there I'm just starting to resolve it, okay? You can see that I now have two peaks instead of one peak, and that's happening when I have a resolution bandwidth of 300 hertz, and that'd be about right, 300 hertz to resolve one kilohertz. Um, so if you are out buying a spectrum analyzer, um, 300 hertz is pretty good. Uh, I would say that's the, the worst spectrum analyzer to buy. 300 hertz is, is, is pretty affordable on the used market. And then if, your resol if uh, spectrum analyzers have better option stuff, you could get better resolution. So here is uh, 300 hertz, but we've spanned out. So again, we're still 300 hertz. You can see that we're not 
Uh, we're seeing the two, but they're not separated yet. We'll go again. Now we're at a resolution bandwidth of 100 hertz, so this would be a very, a very nice spectrum analyzer having, having 100 hertz between the two of them. And then this one, you can go 30 hertz, right? So this is a very expensive analyzer that could do 30 hertz, okay? Okay, let's take a look at that on a uh, tiny SA Ultra. All right, let's see. Let's do frequency. We'll do a center at 16.666. We'll do a span of one megahertz. And that'll be for sure. We'll see it. Now I'll push the button. And um, we get a very ugly picture. Um, that's due to the, the filtering that the... Uh, the Ultra has. So it's not doing a very good job with this signal. It's introducing a whole bunch of uh, Wong stuff. Um, if we zoom in further, I'll do a span of 100 kilohertz. Um, of course, the sweep went way down. But now it's looking a little bit better. Once in a while, you get this fuzz out here, and that's not real. It's just it's just the problem with the analyzer. We're at uh, one kilohertz resolution bandwidth, so we shouldn't be able to see anything yet. I'll do a span of 50 kilohertz. And now our resolution bandwidth is 200 hertz. So uh, yeah, we should be able to see a difference between the two of them now. And there we go, we can resolve the two of them, uh, but our, our, we're spanning too far. We're spanning um, 50 kilohertz. So let's span 10 kilohertz. And you can watch the span down here. It's very, 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 very slow. Um, there we go. So now we're starting to see the two. And so we have uh, 200 hertz resolution bandwidth, and we have a, a span of 10 kilohertz. And things are looking much better now. All right. So besides the very, very slow span of the Ultra, it does have nice resolution bandwidth um, that allows you to see signals like this. So anyway, um, if you're looking to purchase a spectrum analyzer or you want to run over to your friend's house to see how good theirs is, yeah, you can, you can build one of these and uh, pick whatever span, you know, space you want between the two of them, but it's a, a, a nice little... Uh, uh, tool to have in your pocket.